I want to read with you a very short passage from Ephesians, although we'll also refer to some more of the uh, verses of Ephesians in the message this morning. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 32, and reading through chapter 5, verse 2. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the fourth Sunday in the series, Together. The first one, we talked about together, we can find peace. And the second one, together, we experience love. Last week, together, we grow stronger. And today, together, we can change the world. Question for you. Who's your favorite superhero? Iron Man. Oh, Iron Man, says someone. All right. Roy Rogers. <laughs> All right. Jesus, he's the ultimate. Okay, well, I... Okay. For sure, he's, he's more of a superhero, isn't he? Yeah. All right. Who else? And superheroes. Any of the rest of you? Wonder Woman. Oh, Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man. You know, there's Spider-Man, there's Batman, there's uh, Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman, Black Supergirl, Black Superman. Superman. Go ahead. Black Panther. Black Panthers. Oh, yeah. There's somebody or other about the galaxy, too. I don't remember what that one is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it seems like all of these superheroes have their own blockbuster movie and their core of fans who wouldn't want to have some kind of superpower. I mean, superheroes fight for the right. They defeat the evil villains. They restore justice and they save the world. And like I said, they all have their own movie. But I'm here today to tell you the world doesn't need more superheroes. The world needs more people like Mr. Rogers. Remember Mr. Rogers? Yes. Yeah. I just found out this morning that Mr. Rogers is going to have his own movie. There's a Mr. Rogers movie coming up. Don't know about it. Can't recommend it, but I'm sure it's going to be good. Yeah? Oprah. <laughs> you, you think she's a, a superhero? Baby? <laughs> Superheroes versus Mr. Rogers. Let's uh, let's compare and, and see which one is, is more useful or more important or greater, I guess. Um, how about for good looks? Yeah, we're going to have to give that to the superheroes. And strength? Well... I guess we're going to have to give that to the superheroes, too. Two for the superheroes. How about when it comes to being real versus being fake? Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is real, right? Yes, he is. The rest of those guys and women are really fakes, aren't they? Yes. How about arrogance versus humility? I guess we're going to give that one to Mr. Rogers, too, aren't we? Yes. And uh, how about independence versus cooperation. Now I know that some of the superheroes get together in certain circumstances, but really when it comes to being inclusive, accepting, welcoming of people, we're going to give that one to Mr. Rogers. How about who puts people down and who builds people up? Yeah, Mr. Rogers wins that one too. Did you know that he got onto TV in the first place because he didn't like the way that television was treating kids? So I say, we don't need more superheroes. We need more people like Mr. Rogers. 
Did you know that Mr. Rogers was not only a Christian, but an ordained pastor? The principles and characteristics that he displayed on his show were, in many ways, Christ-like. The world needs more people like Mr. Rogers because the world needs more Jesus Christ. As a church, we can learn a lot from Mr. Rogers about welcoming people, listening to them, walking with them, encouraging them. The world will not be changed by superheroes with superhuman powers, but by the divine power of God flowing through ordinary people like us. Listen again to these words from Ephesians. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. I think Mr. Rogers must have been familiar with these verses. I came across this quote from Mr. Rogers. Knowing that we are loved exactly as we are, gives us all the best opportunity for growing into the healthiest of people. Mm -hmm. Be kind. Be compassionate. Be forgiving. <coughs> be loving. When we think about changing the world, we may get hung up on great big superhero kinds of things. But the attitudes and the actions that will change the kind of world we live in are simple things. Kindness, compassion, forgiveness, love. Years ago, I had the opportunity to be in Calcutta, India, where I visited Mother Teresa's home for the destitute and dying. She was a great example to us in many ways. I love this quote from Mother Teresa. Not all of us can do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. Kindness, compassion, forgiveness, love. I said these are simple things. They are simple, but they are not easy. It is not always easy to be kind. It is not easy to be compassionate. It is not easy to be forgiving. It is not easy to love. If it was easy, we would all do it all the time. In fact, it is challenging to love. It's challenging to love others the way that we should. Too often, our best efforts fall short. The Bible says... Follow God's example. The way that children follow the example of their earthly parents. The Bible says, walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. When Paul writes to the church in Ephesus about what it takes to impact the world around them, he doesn't write about earth-shattering events. Instead, he talks about what happens in families, in relationships between husbands and wives, between parents and children. Change happens one person at a time, one relationship at a time. The reality is that the most powerful change is often slow and steady. It doesn't happen all at once. It comes from consistency over a period of time. Forgive, love, sacrifice. In the church, it is important to think big and to plan great God-inspired dreams. But it is also vitally important to act small. There's a Chinese proverb. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. 
So take time to listen to a child. Or to make a phone call to a hurting friend. We need to take the small, incremental steps to reach the goal of true togetherness. Now today will be the first opportunity to sign up for life groups. We have two groups starting next week. Groups where people will have an opportunity to share life together. It will be a powerful mixture of God's Spirit, God's people, and God's Scripture. An opportunity to build relationships and to strengthen the community. You say, why do we need to get together? Why can't I just go it alone on my journey of faith? Well, there's a lot of answers to that. But for one thing, it's tough to self-administer a warm hug when you need one. <laughs> or a good swift kick in the rear, if that's what's required. Just try it. It's tough to do. If you don't already have those kinds of relationships in place, it is usually too late to pull them together after a crisis hits. The challenge is this. Ephesians 2.5 Live a life filled with love. Following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. A pleasing aroma to God. So life is to be a life of love. In fact, love is a lifestyle. Paul warns the church in Ephesus that this kind of togetherness does not come easy. They must be prepared to fight for their community. He says, put on the full armor of God. Now that armor of God is not so that we can fight with one another. It's not even so we can fight people who are on the outside of the church community. It's so that we can fight against evil and the evil one who is behind it. We are to fight for unity and against division. Listen to Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 and 11. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. We need to understand who our enemy is. The devil is real and he is a terrible enemy. The person who disagrees with you is not an idiot or a loser. He or she is a fellow sinner who needs God's grace and salvation, just like you do, just like I do. And let's take a look at the weapons with which we are provided in our struggle, not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The full armor of God includes the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation. And I will just point out that all of those things are defensive in nature. But then we are also provided with weapons of offense. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and with prayer. The Bible goes on to say, pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert, and always keep on praying for all God's people. When we realize that the battle is a spiritual one, it puts things in perspective. Changing our world requires coming together. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25, we read, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. That is the day of the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. An important part of life as a church is coming together. 
physically gathering for worship, fellowship, study, and prayer. Sunday mornings are great. In fact, they are essential. Our life groups will provide an additional opportunity for deeper connections and authentic relationships, a place for mutual support and belonging. We're going to be starting with two groups, meeting during the months of October and November. And then in the new year, we're going to add additional groups. We're starting small. We're going to try to walk before we try to run. Start small, aim tall, and have a ball. That's, that's the way I like to do things. Now, I understand that some of you have schedules that will prevent you from joining a life group at this time. We understand that. In fact, a part of the reason is the fact that we have you so busy with things that are already going on at the church. I want you to consider, if you can't join at this time, how you can give up some things in the new year so that you can ultimately be a part of a small group. And our church may need to give up some programs to focus on developing stronger, deeper relationships through life groups. This is the kind of connection we need and the kind of connection we will have together. And so, kind of wrapping up what we've been through these last four weeks, I want to remind you, together we find peace. Peace with God, peace within ourselves, peace between our sisters and our brothers. Together, we experience love, the love of God poured out upon us and flowing through us to our church family and to our town and the area around us and ultimately to the world. Together, we grow stronger. United, we have a greater impact for the cause of Christ in our world. And together, we can change our world in ways large and small. Together, we can make a difference. Let's continue to live and grow in God's love. Let's lean into this concept of togetherness, not only by joining together regularly for worship, but taking the next step, joining a life group for deeper relationship. You know, I said we can start small. <coughs> and let's start small today. Before you leave church this morning, make a point of greeting someone you don't know well and having a conversation with them. And perhaps this week you could go for lunch with somebody that has only been a casual acquaintance before now. You see, there is a place in God's community for all of us, every single one of us, together. We pray. Father God, is the power of love. The power of God's love revealed in Jesus that brings us together. God, we want to go deeper. In our relationship with you, in our relationship with one another. Thank you that together can make a greater impact for Jesus. Thank you that together we can change our world by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And ask the worship team to come. We're going to join in our closing song, and after that, we're going to hear the benediction. when you pick a new song and it goes so well with the message. We have uh, a God who has a plan. And I love that. Um, your name is Power. And talking about the weapons uh, that we fight with of love and, and coming together in Christ's name. So let's stand and proclaim that right now.
darkness scatters <laughs> When you speak the darkness Light arrives in heaven Yeah. <laughs> 